Well, once again, good evening to part six of B-Zone's interview with Samuel Bonder, founder of Waking Down and Mutuality. In this session, and, uh, I entitled Broken Promises, so enjoy it. What, what are the elements that keeps coming up for me is that the sense of the broken promise or the, the struggle with that. And, and I'm just thinking of a friend of mine, a good friend, Georg Forstein, who mm -hmm. I know quite well. Mm -hmm. And uh, his time of leaving Adidas community and Adidas himself and the time when he went to the island and had his time there and, and when he came back decided to leave. Mm -hmm. um, and then that caused the same kind of turmoil for him Mm -hmm. from the voices of the community of breaking the eternal vows and mm -hmm. you're going to suffer many many years and and i came across something that in in, in as you know arida has collected a body of books and literature that he calls the um the great tradition and and uh, has put it into uh, the seven schools of god talk or mm -hmm. whatever terms mm -hmm. but i came across something that he wrote because he reviewed a book by georg forstein Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you've heard this, but I would like to read it and then have you comment on it. Okay. And, and so it says in 1980, and this is Adida writing, mm -hmm. it says in the 1980s, Georg Forstein was, for a time, a formal student and a beginning student practitioner apprenticing with the general community of my devotees. And as such, he formally and intensively studied my teaching relative to the way of the heart. Eventually, Georg. Forstein discontinued his participation as a formal student and beginning student practitioner of the Way of the Heart in order that he might fulfill his previous commitment to pursue a career as a freelance scholar of the literature of the traditional yoga. Nevertheless, as his subsequent writings oft times demonstrates, he remains an informal student of my revelatory and instructive word. And he is, in fact, expresses his gratitude and his indebtedness to me in this book, which was the yoga, the technology of ecstasy. Mm -hmm. what, what, what he says there in the, that writing is that he has blessed Georg's leaving. Mm -hmm. And in the eyes of the social circumstances of Georg leaving, it appeared that he broke Mm -hmm. and was leaving mm -hmm. the eternal guru and, and going to endure mm -hmm. hellish karma, as uh, you, you, you said. But it doesn't, I mean, obviously, Adida says that you're not supposed to hang around and always be in that formal circumstance, although it might appear that there's this struggle mm -hmm. going on on one level, and on another level, there's something else happening here. And so... Um, and so I guess one of the things that I also would like to point to is that he says that he acknowledges mm -hmm. Adida. Do you, do you in your work acknowledge? or Very give, definitely. Yeah. Very definitely. But, uh, <clears throat> and, and by the way, this is uh, something that uh, Terry Patton and I talked about recently on uh, an interview or conversation we had for his Beyond Awakening series, and we... We specifically got into a piece at the end of that, whatever it was, hour and a half. Uh, Which for the listeners tonight, yeah. uh, or watchers, uh, it's on the B-Zone, so... Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. Good. Yeah, nice. I have it posted on my sites also. Uh, we specifically wanted to get into a discussion of Adi Dao because there's a kind of... I don't want to say objectivity, but there's a... There's a, a quality to the voice of what one has to say uh, that you, you only gain by renouncing the security of uh, the, the apparent inclusion in the fold. Right. And for whatever reasons, uh, Georg and his time, Terry and I both and others, uh, have had to take that step. And I've always been very explicit in my work with people about what I regard to be the immense gifts uh, of Adi Da in his realization, transmission, and his teaching, 
even though there's a great deal about the specifics of his dharma, the expression of the wisdom, mm -hmm. and also his methodology as a teacher, that uh, I would never choose to uh, endorse or practice myself. But uh, I, I feel, and I've uh, said this with Terry, I've said this in conversations with Ken Wilbur that are on the Integral Life uh, archives of, of talks, <clears throat> I've always felt that we, we make a grave, uh, we deprive ourselves if, as many people today still do, uh, we assume that because Adi Da was as controversial and strange in his behavior and blah, 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 as he was, therefore he has not otherwise also made a tremendous contribution. Right. From my perspective, his, his contribution, well, his, for me, uh, both Ramana Maharshi and Adi Da, and in some ways, especially each of them, but big parts Adi Da, um, you know, his, his transmission, his blessing of all beings, which as you're, uh, I mean, in some ways we can extrapolate out, his blessing was and is universal. It's just a given. So there's, there's something that he brought into manifestation that, yeah, you could say theoretically, in principle, there's always great blessing, and there is. But there's a piece that he brought in that is a gift to everybody mm -hmm. and, is, and is literally always helping to awaken the heart and the fullness of being of humankind. And then there's a whole lot more that could be said, and right. including details of his teachings that are very, very relevant for what uh, I'm trying to do, what Linda, my wife, and I and our community are doing. And um, I, I completely agree. I, I appreciate what mm. he said about Georg. And I interpret it similarly as his way of saying Georg. Blessings. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, never, I never had that go on uh, for whatever reason uh, directly from him. I would hear at various times that he continued to regard me as a devotee, which at the time I wasn't necessarily too thrilled to hear. <laughs> I, mean, I was like, well, yeah, but not the way... <laughs> But um, after his death, actually, uh, huh. I had a dream with him that was um, that was really. Uh, I, I had longed for some kind of meeting that, after waking up, I would feel was authentic. And, right. and uh, very briefly in this dream, he showed up in a very social circumstance, and people were around doing all these things. And he said to me, uh, kind of looking off in a distance. He, he said to me, uh, very passionately, he says, can you tell me even one thing you ever did for me? <laughs> and he had long hair at the time, and, and I, I reached over, and I literally kind of brushed his hair back from his ear. And I was going to whisper in his ear, and I was thinking about this biography, The Divine Emergence of the World yeah. Teacher, which at the time he said, basically fine, which coming from him was like triple A+. Plus. Then he listed all these places that were typos, which was his way of saying, I felt. I read every word of it, you bastard. Not bad. <laughs> but, so I was, I was going to say, yeah, I wrote that book. And then, you know, instead I was overwhelmed with a whole other, And so as I got to him, I, I whispered passionately in his ear, Beloved, I gave you everything. <laughs> I gave you 13 years of my life. And I felt it just go in, and the, you know, the, the tension broke. Right. And then the dream shifted, and he was over talking to somebody else. And I said, wait a minute, what was it, 13 years? And I shouted over the room, it was 20 years! <laughs> and then there was an, another, uh, kind of the, the next moment was um, he and I were just together personally, for whatever this is worth. I mean, this is just my dream, I yeah. interpret it my way, yeah. other people yeah. can say what they yeah. wish, but... He said to me, will you stay with me? And I was, by way of explaining that I couldn't, I started to say, well, as you know, as I'm 
sure you know, I've become a teacher myself. And I was about to say, I have experienced people leaving who I love, mm -hmm. who can't stay. But as soon as I said, as you may know, I've become a teacher myself, his eyes rolled up and the dream ended. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I was, um, in my day, I was a very passionate devotee, so it, it meant a lot to me, too. Well, absolutely, and as you said, I mean, you're a young adult, and coming into his world, and his universe, and his, his power, mm -hmm. you were completely absorbed into that yeah. for 20 years. Nearly 20 years. Yeah. 20 years. Well, I, I, I could go... Good evening everybody and welcome to the Bezone Studios.